Hey everyone, today we are going to talk about PDFs and how you can actually save PDFs, uh, where, uh, custom PDFs. So there was a video, I actually created a video about PDFs. This is the one that I'm talking about. Create create your own PDF files in Photoflow with just a few clicks plus amazing bonus content. And this is how you can actually, I'm explaining how you can actually create your own PDF. And then I did another video, which is this one, how to create PDF with images and assets. Uh, and that's why you don't see the image right here, because if you watch the video, I'm currently in test mode and in test mode, uh, the assets are not working from the code. So that's why you see this. Uh, so let me show you how this works. Uh, so first of all, uh, this is my old code for creating uh, PDFs files. I remove the assets image because like I said, it, the assets is not working in test mode. It's only working in uh, web deployment. Uh, and then uh, we have two things here. So before that, we print the PDF and the user can actually save it or do whatever uh, they want to. But right now we actually, uh, we we'll actually, we will actually save the PDF uh, with the current date and time, and we will save it to the folder users, the current user, and then the PDF. So if I click this button, I should see the PDF. Yes, like this. And then if I go over here and I refresh, I should see two files, which is the one that I tested and the one that I just did. So indeed, this is uh, the case. And you can see that this is the uh, date and the time that the PDF was recorded. Of course, you can change this to wherever you want to. And if I click this link, it's opening the same PDF that I just created. There were actually people that were asking there were people uh, like last week in the live session there were people asking how you can do this this is actually i'll share you the code how you can actually do this and the other thing that i wanted to share with you is how you can actually save a pdf from a link it sounds like something very uh or save a file from a link not only a pdf but let's talk about pdf today and i'm always using this sample pdf uh, that you can find in Google, just uh, just write sample PDF and you can find it. It's a two page PDF. And the idea, the whole idea is that if you have a file from an URL like this, you should be able to put this file over here, uh, to, sorry, to put the link over here and click upload. And this should upload it to uh, Firebase storage. Uh, so if I click over here, I should be able to see the file, but fortunately I'm not able to see the file. This is an old file. I will delete it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, the reason for that is that, uh, you have, you, you actually get an error, uh, which is, uh, course error. So it's a course, uh, it's a course original uh, access control allowed origins header is presented to the request resource. Uh, this error, it's actually a normal error. And the reason for that is that you, we have, we have one domain, which in our case is uh, the domain of the Flutterflow. So we have, for example, beta.flutterflow.io and we're trying to access some other domain, which is uh, africau.au. Uh, and this actually returns in a cross error policy blocked by Google uh, Chrome. And there is actually, uh, I think this will actually work in mobile. So that's why I'm sharing this with you because this I think will only not work in a web because uh, there was it was tested not by me but it was tested by search uh, and I really trust search and he told me that this is working fine in mobile so if you want to use it in mobile uh, it should be good to go now but in for for course I will share I will share a workaround with you for uh, for web uh, and also uh, there will be 
because this is not the best workaround or the best solution. I will share uh, in the future, I will share uh, a working solution for that. Okay, so let's go and show you how you can actually use the custom uh, PDF to upload to storage. So the custom PDF, like I said, is a PDF that you you are going to build. So I actually kept my PDF like it was before. The only thing that I comment, like I said, was the asset because the asset will not work in the test mode. That's why I commented because I will get errors otherwise. And uh, uh, I just wanted to ask people if uh, you can, if you have a legit template of uh, invoice, for example, or something like that, like uh, a good template, uh, please share it with me so I can share it with the people uh, and they can actually uh, see uh, or they can actually copy it because a lot of people are asking me for a template for invoice. Uh, but yeah, I should probably do it myself if no one is uh, willing to share their templates of the invoice. So whatever. Uh, what I wanted to say is that this is the end. That this is the end with the code that was before, and now I added a couple of lines. It seems a lot, but it's actually not. I added the the current date and time. I and I then I formatted. So I formatted the year, month. And then the dates, uh, the time, the hours, the minutes, and the seconds. And you can actually format it the way that you want to. So you can format it any way that you want to. Uh, I set uh, the name of the formatted file, uh, which is that I just added that PDF. Uh, in this case, actually, we are, as I said, we're working with PDFs. We are creating PDFs. So the only format we are going to have is a PDF one. And then we have this, which is actually uh, the, doc the documentary, uh, sorry, uh, the directory part. And the directory part is actually users and then the UID of the user and then PDFs is the one that I created. Uh, and in order to use uh, the current user UID, you, you have to actually import uh, this which is import data slash data slash and then out and slash out you util that dart this is uh this is a full of flow source code library or file and that's why when we are importing source code files when we have this dot dot slash dot dot in our custom code uh, we can do it in custom actions, custom widgets, but not in custom widgets. Keep that in mind. Uh, and then we need to exclude it for compilation. If we don't exclude it for compilation, it will not work and it give you errors when you compile the, this code. And then when you're done with this, we have the, now we have the storage path, which is combined with the directory path plus the file name. And the final thing is actually saving the file. And saving the file will be the storage the storage path combined with the PDF, the actual PDF. And the actual PDF, it's uh, the same old PDF that we're going to print. And then we save it over here. We can actually save, if we need this path, uh, we can save it. If you need the path that we, uh, the path that we save the PDF, we can actually, um, so this is the uh, whole idea of the code. And this is the code I added. I will actually post this code in my GitHub. So this is my GitHub. And if you go to custom actions, uh, the one that you need, I think it's a uh, generate PDF. If you write here, PDF, yeah, it's PDF generate is the file that I'm talking about as the file is the file that you are going to need. Um, okay, so this is this is everything about the saving the file. Like I said, this is important uh, to save the file in users, current user ID, and then PDFs because if you save it in the root directory, for example, probably you get uh, errors because of the permissions. So if you save it to the folder of the user, you don't have permissions uh, errors. Uh, and the other way, it's if you want to save it in the root or some other directory, uh, you have to mess with permissions, Firebase permissions, in order to save it uh, there. <clears throat>
And then let's move on to the second part, which is how you can upload any file, not only PDF, but let's talk in PDF right now. So we have this uh, Tart Convert, which I think we don't need it to be honest, uh, because this is messing with JSON, so we don't have any JSONs right here. And then the second one, it's the HTTP. So the HTTP is actually uh, used for requesting like doing a REST request, like in this example, I get, I'm doing a GET request. And the other import is, again, uh, I need it for the notification of the user. And like, I forgot to say, but uh, yeah, you actually need to be a logged in user in order to uh, save anything in Firestore. And the reason for that is because we are actually using uh, the user ID uh, so if we don't have the user ID, uh, there is no way uh, to save it, uh, to save the file. So keep that in mind, it's important. I forgot to, to say, uh, I forgot to mention it. Uh, you need uh, to be uh, a logged in user or identified user uh, uh, before you upload or before you use, you use those two codes. Okay, and the last one is actually uh, the Firebase storage, which have, which give you an access to this fancy little, uh, fancy little method, uh, which will be actually uploading your data. So in this case, now uh, it's your file. So this is your file name, uh, and then uh, we have uh, the bytes. And the bytes are actually coming from the response and we're converting to bytes. So body that bytes is converting the file to bytes. And finally, we're returning to uh, downloaded or so we're returning to a link to the uh, to the file storage. And the link to the file storage is actually this one. So if I click over here, this is the link. It's a very long link. Uh, but this is the link that you can, and you can actually, you should be open this in uh, incognito mode. It's not connected to your, um, to your, yeah, you can see it. I open it in incognito mode, which means that it's not connected to your Firebase uh, storage. Okay. And then, uh, let me close this one. So yeah, this is the code. It's a very simple code. Uh, I actually tried uh, a couple of things. That's why I, I have so many uh, lines that are commanded uh, to get rid of the course error. But unfortunately, I was not able to get rid of the course error for, uh, for web. Uh, but like I said, for mobile, it should work like a charm without any problems. Uh, and for web, and for web, there is actually this fancy uh, extension, which is allow course. So if I, uh, if I add it to my uh, Chrome, uh, I should be able to go over here right now. Uh, it's still loading for some reason. And then if I click the extension, uh, I should be able to enable it. So if I have to, first add it and then I have to enable it. So this is the toggle over here. I can uh, switch it on and off. Now it's on. And then let's go back to the page that we're trying to add files to. So if I go to this upload file uh, and let's try to upload this simple PDF file and then click upload. And let's see if we're actually getting any errors. We don't get any errors and that uh, that you see that it was successfully uploaded. And this is the link actually that was created. And then if I go back to my user, uh, I think it's in uploads. And let me see where I put it. I think it's in uploads. So we have the user ID and then we are uploading it there. Uh, yeah, sorry, it's actually the users and then the user ID and this is the file that we just uploaded. You can see it from the date and time. Uh, 
yeah you can see it from the date and time uh, and you can see that this is actually working let's try with an image for example so yeah let's try with this image i don't know if this image will work uh, i create this image with dali uh, and the first version not the second version uh, and then because this is a web p file as you can see over here i'm not sure if this will work to be honest uh, but let's see so if i go over here paste the file over here because you can see it's not ending on a, a strict extension it's not ending like that gpg jet jpg or pdf or png or whatever so if i upload it probably it will yeah it will work because at the end of the day it's just bytes but let me see if i actually if i see what is the file name and what is the extension of the file so the file name it's image web which is correct if i click on it yeah, you can see the image so it actually worked <laughs> it surprised me but it's actually work if i click over here this is the image that was uploaded so yeah like i said you can upload any images uh, sorry any files not images any files that you want uh, and the only problem is the source uh, which uh, i just show you how you can uh, uh, how we can deal with it in your browser the problem is that uh, your clients needs to have this extension as well in order to deal with this uh, issue uh, but uh, like i said i will try to have a working solution for you guys in the future uh, and the future uh, we have some excited videos and i prepared for you actually uh, I can prepare for you a cloud function. So we're going to talk about cloud functions. We're going to talk about um, uh, like uh, to uh, to control widgets outside of the widget, uh, which I think this is uh, what a lot of people want. Uh, and yeah, if you don't start my uh, GitHub repo, please do. Uh, and if you didn't subscribe to my channel please do and the final thing that I wanted to say is that thank you for watching the video and we have the live sessions every Wednesday actually the, the day of the recording this video is Wednesday so today we're going to have a live session with you guys so I hope you like this video and stay safe take care bye bye